Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you three tips for tomorrow's horse race in action but before we get into that let's quickly just reflect on how our tips performed today. In the end it wasn't a bad day on our YouTube channel as we did find the one winner at Ascot that was my next best guru advertised at 9-2 and just got up on the line to get the job done for us so hopefully some of you back that one. Away from that, our other selections were slightly disappointing. I thought Raising Sands, though, to be fair, even though he didn't make the first six places, he still ran a really credible race, you know. He finished in eighth place in the end, but he still ran a valiant race, but just wasn't good enough on the day to make the first six. Baltic Baron ran, I thought, okay as well, but just uh, didn't stay in the end. He came there with a good run, but it just faded in the closing stages. But it was definitely worth the experiment, because like I made... Uh, my case for him last night he is bred to stay at least that far but maybe 10 furlongs is his optimum and he might be dropped a pound or two as, as well for that run so i don't think he's one to completely dismiss and then my nap beloved was really disappointing at york maybe she just needed the run returning from a short break but she wasn't that straightforward she was hanging in the closing stages as well so yeah that was very disappointing but on the whole it hasn't been a terrible day we had a nice 9-2 winner and fingers crossed we can find some winners for you tomorrow. So we're going to be going to Musselburgh for our three tips tomorrow where they've got the first of uh, the new Sky Bet Summer Series races. I think they're doing a few of them over the next uh, couple of weeks uh, at places like Musselburgh and I can't remember where else they're doing but they're doing a few of these on uh, Sunday evening. So yeah it's a good initiative and we'll see how it gets on but let's get into the tips then. Three selections from Musselburgh and we're going to be going with my long shot with my first tip tomorrow which runs in the 5.15. We're going with a horse called Never Dark for Andrew Mullen and Ian Jardine. Now, this horse at the time of recording was available at 10 to 1 with William Hill, who are offering six places on this race. I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. Now, this horse used to be previously trained by Andrew Bolden. It was a little bit of a frustrating type for him. It was always highly regarded in the betting and ran some okay races, but just was never the most straightforward of horses. Since switching to uh, Ian Jardines, he has shown uh, his ability, this horse, you know, and, and has put a few decent efforts together, but it's just ultimately been undone by a, a couple of useful sorts. Now, I thought his last run, actually, when he finished third at Messelborough, was actually an encouraging run. He actually bumped into uh, Paul Midgley's horse that day. He's actually subsequently going to be reposing tomorrow, but our selection is now £8 better off at the weight, so I think that will definitely be in his favour, and also as well, they're going to be applying first-time cheap pieces tomorrow, which I think will help. He also as well, he likes to be handy up there with the running, and I think if they ride that, ride him like that at Musselburgh tomorrow, I think he's got a good chance. Drawing to 11 as well, which isn't the worst draw. I wouldn't want to be on a horse here, coming through traffic problems. We know what it can be like. And I think it's a 10 to 1, that isn't a bad each way bet at all. And I'd be disappointed if he at least couldn't make the first six. So that's why Never Dark is going to be my long shot of the day in the 5.15 at Musselburgh. We then move on to the Phillies handicap, the 5.45 for my nap. And this isn't a particularly original selection, but I just think she'll be good enough and she should take all the beating to win. And that is Rising Star for Ben Curtis and Marco Botti. Currently 2-1, to one, best price time recording. Now I'm going to recommend a one-point win bet here. And this filly clearly brings in the best uh, level of form when she posted a second-place effort in a decent race at Newmarket last time out at the July Festival there. She ran against some useful types from some real powerful yards and she did the job really well. And I think she's got a really good chance in this race. She's well treated off a mark of 85, receiving that three-year-old allowance against these older horses. And she's got not a bad draw tomorrow to capitalise to go from the front. Musselboro often speak about it, especially over the seven furlongs and mile track. You kind of want to be handy and prominent. Not too many horses do come from too far back. And there's not that much pace in here at all. So if Ben Curtis can get into a good prominent position, I think she'll take all the beating. I think she could go off slightly shorter tomorrow. I wouldn't be at all surprised if she went off. Off maybe around about the six to four mark she could even get a little bit shorter in the betting as well i think there will be a lot of market support for her tomorrow and i think she'll take all the beating in that race we then stay at musselburgh for the next selection which is going to be my next best in the 615 at musselburgh with a horse called eaton college for joe fannin and mark johnson currently at the time recording this horse was available of sky bet who are paying five places on this race at 10 to 1 and i'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here now eaton college contrary to what i just said is actually going to be relying on a, str a strong pace i think tomorrow and i think he'll get it actually because if you look at a lot of the horses 
that are running in this race, the ones that are drawn low, a lot of them like to get on with the with the, with the running. There's at least four or five horses I, I could see in here going handy or going forward. And it could just set up for a closer like him. Now, if you've seen some of his efforts this season, he's come from a strong pace. In fact, actually, he's now only one pound higher than his last win, which actually came here over the course and distance in a higher grade in a class three handicap in similar conditions back in April when they went really hard that day and he stayed on really strongly and was quite a comfortable winner, I thought, in the end. And he made up a lot of ground and was very impressive. Now, we've seen him a couple of times recently, most notably over a mile, where he still ran a good race behind the horse of Huey Morrison's, who ran a blinder today, and did well uh, staying on in the closing stages. But I think this drop back to seven will suit him tomorrow. I think it could become more of a stamina test over the trip, because like I say, there are a few in here that do like to get on with things, and there could be a pace collapse. And I think that could just suit Eaton College down to the ground. And at 10 to 1, with five places each way, I think he'll be doing his best work late on. I think he's got a really good each way chance in that race at Musselburgh. So there's the three tips for tomorrow's horse race in action. If you're still enjoying these videos, remember to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe here to my YouTube channel at Lucky Loaders 15 Also as well, if you want to follow me on social media, Twitter is the best place to do so, where my handle is also at Lucky Loader 15 And if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, my website address is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk. So please gamble responsibly. Hopefully we can have someone interview tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon.